Sir Henry Morgan, Admiral of Buccaneers, Captain of Privateers, Commander-in-Chief of all the ships of war of Jamaica, Colonel of His Majesty's Forces, Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica, Senior Member of the Council of Jamaica, Governor of the Fort and Commander-in-Chief of the Forces of Jamaica, also twice acting Governor of Jamaica. Thousands of parrots waited on his sleep. He lay in bed and watched the darkness change to mangy boughs where wicked monkeys creep or crumble to one more damned mountain range. No water save what monkeys from the sky sent curving down in mockery of cracked lips. He saw the skulking hatred in each eye and each dead tree the hulk of his charred ships. Quietly stumbling to console sore toes, he planned peculiar torments for the dawns. Then left and right twitched his suspicious nose, that peak of copper in a blaze of bronze. And all the time he wanted but so little, he wanted nothing but an easy life. And rum, the thought surprised his tongue with spittle, and never any quarrels with his wife. Then the doors burst and through them murderers yelled. A roar of darkness blacked the sky's tall bowl, and lying on his back Morgan beheld the darkness twinkle round a gulping hole. Till the vast gut of the torn universe evacuated gold upon his head, he struggled for a moment with a curse, then warmly lapsed upon that golden bed. Henry Morgan was born in 1635 in Wales, the eldest son of Robert Morgan. Despite claims to the contrary by some historians, most likely going off of Esquimalan's less than flattering but popular account of Morgan, family was an important aspect of Henry Morgan's life. While little is known about his early life, most sources agree that his family was heavily involved in the military. Both of his uncles were commanding officers, and from a young age, Henry was more inclined to a military life than to receiving a formal education. Later in life, Morgan stated that, The office of Judge Admiral was not given to me for my understanding of the business better than others, nor for the profitableness thereof. For I left the schools too young to be a great proficient in that or other laws, and I've been more used to the pike than the book. Instead of learning the skills necessary for the life of a farmer or an English businessman, he was learning skills in military strategy from his uncle, Edward Morgan, who was stationed close to Henry's home in Wales. His cousin Charles, Edward's son, was one of his closest friends and supported Henry later on in his political career. Henry also married Edward's youngest daughter, his cousin, Mary Elizabeth Morgan. At the age of 20, Henry Morgan came to the Americas as a soldier with General Venables in 1654. After the English gained possession of Jamaica, Morgan remained in the area. Around the age of 24, Morgan went to Tortuga to enlist with a crew of buccaneers. A buccaneer was a pirate that attacked Spanish ships and ports in the 17th century. In the stern days of his buccaneers, no man was accepted as a leader unless he was an expert sailor and had risen from the ranks. The years he spent as a member of a buccaneer crew are not documented. He never wrote anything about his experiences at sea, which is most likely because he could not have been proud of sea fighting. Henry was more interested in the strategy required to descend with ships on a coast in surprise attacks, plundering or marching inland to capture rich cities. By nature, he was a military conqueror, not a sailor. However, as a sailor, he matured into a captain who prepared every detail before executing a raid. Morgan greatly disliked disorganization, which most likely made the life of a sailor difficult for him. The first time Captain Henry Morgan was identified as a buccaneer is in 1666 in a report from the Governor of Port Royal to the Duke of Albemarle. In the report, Morgan was listed as one of three English buccaneers, all of whom were alarmingly adept at warfare. In 1665, when England declared war with the Netherlands, a number of ships sailed from Port Royal to help in the war effort by attacking Dutch merchant vessels. Among them was his uncle, Sir Edward Morgan. Henry Morgan, however, did not join them. It has been speculated that this is because of his unwillingness to go as a junior officer in the king's business with little opportunity for plunder. Morgan had spent the last year raiding Spanish ports up and down the Central American coast, the most notable of which was his attack on Granada. In 1666, Morgan now openly made Port Royal his base for enterprises that tended more and more to wear the mask of legality. In other words, he began only sailing with letters of mark, meaning that he had legal documentation permitting him to continue his raids on the Spanish with the king's permission. In the same year, Morgan also became the Admiral of Buccaneers. He had been in command of a ship in the fleet when the former Admiral, Edward Mansfield, was captured and executed by the Spanish. The other privateers in the fleet elected Morgan to replace Mansfield. This shows that he was recognized among his fellow buccaneers as a strong and respectable leader. 
These qualities were again reflected in his appointments as both Lieutenant Governor of Port Royal, the main port in Pirates of the Caribbean, and then later as Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica. Though he has been portrayed in many accounts as a cutthroat and bloodthirsty pirate, Henry Morgan was a reasonable man and often open to the nonviolent option. On December 14, 1670, Morgan and his crew sailed to Providencia Island, which they needed to pass in order to get to Panama. After a day of heavy fire, Morgan sent a message to the governor of the island, demanding surrender or he would give no quarter to survivors. After two hours of deliberation, the governor agreed, but only on the condition that Morgan would participate in a fake battle to save the reputation of the governor. Morgan agreed, but only upon the understanding that none of his men would be harmed. The charade went off without a hitch. Shots were fired into the air for effect, and no one was killed or injured on either side. This and other examples demonstrate that Morgan was averse to purposeless cruelty. Sir Henry Morgan retired a wealthy man, one who also had quite a taste for rum. Instead of spending all of his loot on luxuries, Morgan invested his money in land in Jamaica and by the end of his career he had acquired a substantial amount of property. Sir Henry Morgan died on August 25, 1688 of what historians believe to be tuberculosis and was buried in London. Following an earthquake in 1692, the cemetery fell into the ocean and he now rested in peace in Davy Jones' locker. Throughout his career as a buccaneer and later as a politician, Captain Henry Morgan showed that he was a man of intellect, organization, respectability, fairness, and reason. Now you know what it means to have a little captain in you.